Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking time to listen to this call, particularly those of you that are calling in for the first time and will be listening to the replay over the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we like to move quickly on the call, get the information to you, bottom line it for you. We know you're busy people and you have other things to do, uh, but we do have some important information to share with you. We have a standard format. We spend a few minutes talking about the revaluation of the uh, Iraqi dinar, which we continue to believe is the base currency for the uh, reval of these other currencies. A few minutes talking about the program we've put into place to assist you, and then we go to a brief Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started, talk a little bit about the uh, eminent revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of these currencies. We're not advocating the sale or purchase of these currencies, but as substantial currency holders ourselves, we're sharing with you the information that we think is relevant. And the first relevant issue would be a plausible window for the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar. Uh, we have a rather wide spectrum here. Uh, the way it seems to me that this is going to work is that they are going to dot the remaining I's and cross the remaining T's in the next 30 days, meaning that the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar would be eminent because the reinstatement would occur in country. But failing that for rather complicated reasons I'll touch on, this could get pushed all the way to January of 2020. Now, I know that's not what anyone wants to hear, and I certainly don't want to say it, but I'm not here to, um, to prevaricate. I'm here to tell you the information as I see it based on the things that I'm being told by people with whom I have a great trust. There are two areas I want to discuss. One has to do with uh, in country in Iraq, the current political situation and the formation of the new government. And the second is the progress being made on their currency reforms. So let's start first on the political end. There still remain several ministerial seats unfilled uh, for the Mahdi government. Now the Islamic Dawa party, the problem in my view, is trying to get uh, Maliki appointed to one of the vice presidential seats. This would, of course, allow him to retain his immunity, which is what they want. But uh, Maliki is nothing but a proxy for the Iranians, and he's trouble. Uh, his tenure as the um, prime minister of the country almost destroyed the country. The Sadrists, however, which is probably the most powerful bloc, will oppose any such appointment, will oppose the appointment of any officials that are in any way proxies for Iran, and frankly, they want to see uh, Maliki in prison, so we'll see how that plays out. Iran's basic ploy is to do everything they can to try to slow down the establishment and the formation of the new government, and to the extent possible, get their proxies into government. Uh, they would even be okay with complete demise of the new government and uh, to create another vacuum for them to fill. Uh, I've said it before, and I'm not talking about the Iranian people. I have many friends here in this country that are Iranian. They're all wonderful people. They're all more distraught than we are. But the Iranian mullahs, uh, there's no other way to say it. They're cockroaches, uh, and they must be dealt with. And uh, I think that the Iraqi government's doing everything they can to try to purge themselves of the influence of the Iranians. Now, theoretically, if this new government is not formed within the next 30 days, uh, the parliament would be in a position to have a no-confidence vote, which, of course, would shut down the formation of a new government. We'd have to start all over again. I doubt very seriously if that's going to happen. It didn't even happen under the Maliki uh, regime, so I don't think it's going to happen under Mahdi, who is at least working in good faith and is not a proxy for Iran. The major blocs are meeting, however, and trying to come to a compromise on the remaining ministers, so that's, that's pretty good news. Again, I think over the next 30 days, it's entirely possible that the government, the new government, can be entirely uh, put into place 
and that issue will be dealt with. Now as to the issue of currency reforms, the CBI, Central Bank of Iraq, is an independent agency, and they are ready to both delete the zeros and then reinstate the currency in country. They attempted to do so at least once uh, this year uh, and were held back once again because of Iranian influence. At this point, however, even the IMF supports the CBI in their effort to once again delete the zeros and reinstate their currency. However, at this time, the government of Iraq is still trying to hold back. They want to see the full formation of the new government, and they still want to see, to the extent possible, the elimination of Iranian influence. But the CBI and the uh, Department of Finance are currently sponsoring a symposium on the deletion of the zeros. Now, this is important because what they were saying was we want to educate the general public before we do something. So this suggests that despite the fact that there are some things that need to get done, the CBI is serious about moving forward. This symposium is going to deal with the general concept of deleting the zeros, why the three zeros were added to the provisional currency, why the three zeros have to come off, the expected results by removing the three zeros and collecting all the provisional currency, and they'll point to the successful results of other countries, i.e. Kuwait. So the CBI does have one trump card which they may play, and that is once the CBI orders the eight regional graffiti banks to release the lower denoms from their banks to the general public, then that would be a signal that the deletion of the zeros and the reinstitution of the currency is either eminent or has, e or has perhaps even taken place but not been announced. So there is a, I would say, a 50-50 or better chance that all this gets done within the next 30 days. But of course, the caveat would be that if it doesn't get done, this thing could, worst case scenario, get pushed into January of 2020. I'm not saying that's what would happen if this did not get resolved within the next 30 days. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. But I'd say maybe 10 or 15% chance of that, but again, it's a possibility. Now, for those of you that have not as yet gotten your affairs in order and may not understand what that involves, you may only have a matter of weeks to get this done if we're fortunate enough to see everything come into focus in Iraq, and that is entirely possible. Trust Unlimited has put a turnkey program in place to assist you. It's a two-phased program. Phase one is pre-RV. Phase two is post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a pre-RV package of asset protection trusts and the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust package. Post-RV involves all the product services and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of these currencies. Now, the primary purpose of establishing this trust is to protect your privacy and your anonymity. So let's talk a little bit about that. And this, of course, would be phase one. There are a number of entities out there that provide asset protection, but there are varying degrees of that protection. For example, an individual could establish a limited liability company or a sub S corporation. That's a business structure, and it does, as LLC implies, provide only limited asset protection. Not only that, courts have ruled that LLCs and sub-S corporations that are owned either by one person or 51% of the ownership is to one person or to a closely held small group of people, they can be pierced in civil litigation. So LLCs and sub-S corporations do not provide sufficient asset protection in our view. The other issue would be single trusts. Now, there are trusts out there like the Constitutional Trust, the Pure Trust, the Non-Grantor Trust. These trusts are all flagged by the IRS, so we would never touch such trusts. We would not establish a trust if requested at any price. There are also business trusts out there. Now, the problem with most of these trusts is that they are single trusts, meaning that all of the assets are placed in one trust or one entity. That creates a vulnerability. If any asset within that trust is involved in civil litigation, that drags all of the other assets into that litigation because 
The trust owns the asset that's being litigated, but it also owns the other assets. Trusts Unlimited has created a package of trusts. In addition to the asset protection available through our Wyoming package, there are two elements that I want to touch on. One, again, is the package of trusts, and one is the flight provision in our trust package. By creating a package of trusts, you have isolated each asset you own into a separate trust, sub-trust. By doing that, you by definition limit any liability because if an asset is involved in civil litigation, that's the only asset that would be vulnerable because it's the only asset that would be owned by that one trust. The other issue is that the Wyoming Trust, pursuant to Section 4-10-515, allows for the retroactive redomicile of our trust to Wyoming. Now, that's a lot of gobbledygook to most people, but let me explain what this means. Most sophisticated trust packages have something called a flight provision, meaning that if you're being sued where you live, you can move that trust to another jurisdiction, making it extremely difficult and extremely expensive for an individual to pursue you for civil litigation. Here's the problem. With a standard flight provision, you as the owner of that trust would have to take an affirmative act by moving the trust to another jurisdiction. Courts are now ruling that you are disallowed from making or taking an affirmative action after civil suit has been filed. Now, why is our trust different? Our trust because it's Wyoming, has a retroactive flight provision, meaning that the transfer or redomicile of that trust to Wyoming retroactively to the date of inception is in the trust and it's contractual, meaning that if you should be sued in whatever state or jurisdiction you live, you have taken no affirmative action. As a matter of fact, the only way to stop the retroactive transfer to Wyoming would be to take an affirmative action. So we circumvent the courts that try to deny you the right to take flight. Now, as a result of these two and other nuances within our trust, I, over the course of the seven years that I've worked with Trusts Unlimited and having reviewed literally dozens of trusts, have seen nothing that comes even close to this trust product for protecting your privacy and your asset protection. But it's critical that you set the trust up prior to the revaluation of the currencies for a number of reasons, and I'm going to touch on them now. First, by establishing this asset protection trust package and assigning your currencies on paper to that trust package, as I've said before, your privacy and your anonymity are protected. Why? Because assets held within our irrevocable trust package are sealed, and the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. Second, by establishing this trust package, you will successfully avoid personal IRS scrutiny. If you're holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, the IRS computers will most likely spit out an audit. And with the potential magnitude of this revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown audit. Such an audit's going to be time-consuming, it's going to be frustrating, and frankly, it's probably going to cost you more than our asset protection trust package. On the other hand, if your trust package is in force and your currencies are assigned to that trust package, you have successfully transferred the taxable event of the revaluation from yourself personally to the trust. Now, this is important for two reasons. First, there's less than a 10% chance of an IRS audit if the taxable event of the revaluation occurs within this irrevocable trust package. But second and most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit the trust package, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is if you're gifting currencies to family and friends in certain situations. Philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax-preferred basis, either pre- or post-RV. But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, 
You're going to need to gift currencies to family and friends prior to the revaluation. Now, if you're gifting to individuals that you have no problem either giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the U.S. dollars after you have done the exchange, that can be accomplished outside of the trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post-RV U.S. dollar lump sum, we've created a special gift subtrust within our package of trusts. By gifting currencies to this gift subtrust, you will avoid the 40% federal gift tax. The language of this subtrust allows you to gift up to a certain amount of a currency or currencies meaning you can give these individuals the exact U.S. dollar that you had in mind, irrespective of the exchange rate. But because you're gifting through this trust package, not only will their U.S. dollars be protected along with yours, but you will then be able to manage, invest, and distribute their money as you deem appropriate. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies were valued for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs in the state of $25 million. Now that estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process, meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much they each stand to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. Then there's something called the federal estate tax. This is the tax that the federal government will assess in order for that estate to be transferred to heirs. Under current law, approximately $10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax but the balance could be taxed as much as 55%. Scenario number two, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, you assign those currencies on paper to our asset protection trust package. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs that same estate of $25 million. However, this time, that estate is held within our Asset Protection Trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero, saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it provides very specific asset protection benefits, one pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package will allow you to circumvent something called the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. What does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you actually own in direct title or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our trust package. So let's take the previous example from above. You purchase five million dinar for $5,000, transfer the currencies to our trust package. Those currencies subsequently revalue for $25 million. You begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth, and a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably, and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a, several problems. First, he or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust has been structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. Most importantly, pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, once this prospective plaintiff learns 
that the only thing that they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000, the value of the property that you, at the time you transferred it to the trust, and none of the post-RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post-RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This is accomplished through a legal strategy called segregation of assets. And again, this is how it would work. We'll use the same example. You purchase five million dinar for five thousand dollars, transfer them to the trust, they revalue for twenty five million. Now that you have twenty five million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write off and additional cash flow, a couple of cars, a boat, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, you place each of them in their own separate subtrust to be managed by your master trust. Now, why is this important? This is important because by creating a package of trusts, you will be protecting your wealth from future bad acts after you have acquired this wealth. For example, let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars, you have an accident, the accident is clearly your fault, and tragically someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victim is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your sub-trusts of which you're merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with a victim's family. You will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car, and this is important. All of your other assets are safely protected in other subtrusts. Now, why are those assets protected? They're protected because under the law, those separate sub-trusts are separate legal entities, and the plaintiffs would have no standing to pursue those separate legal entities. So this package of trusts does something that you cannot do for yourself. It segregates, protects you, protects your assets, and makes it virtually impossible, if not impossible, to go after someone's entire net worth. Now, our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned pre-RV currencies and then your final uh, post-RV assets like bank accounts, investment accounts, and financial assets. One optional gift subtrust if you wish to gift currencies to family and friends, which subtrust at any time can be converted to a standard subtrust, and eight additional subtrusts to hold financial assets, or excuse me, physical assets like homes, cars, boats, etc. Now, this trust package is the simplification of a rather sophisticated trust package that we utilize for our more affluent clients a package that has an initial cost of anywhere from six to $10,000. But when we decided to work with denarians, we knew that that price tag was going to be unaffordable for many. So by unfunding the trust pre-RV, we've been able to reduce the cost to $3,000. Now, there are several ways you can pay for that. If you pay us up front, we'll discount the price further to $25,000. $100, saving you an additional 500 If that's not possible, we do have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525, which some would basically offset our out-of-pocket costs just to produce uh, and deliver the trust package to you. One other suggestion, we do accept credit cards. Pay us up front with a credit card. Not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payments on your credit card would be less than the 100 a month you'd pay under our deferred payment arrangement. Our objective is to help you get your asset protection trust package in place during phase one prior to the revaluation of the currencies. 
Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, a holder of our pre-RV Asset Protection Trust package, then you will be eligible to participate in Phase 2, all of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of these currencies. I'll just make mention of one here today. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trusts Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trust packages post-RV. In addition, many of our existing clients have expressed desires to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is from the transfer of funds directly from your asset protection trust to those newly formed entities. We'll also have our tax specialists at the seminar. Our offshore specialists will show you that by establishing offshore title of certain assets, you can substantially reduce and in some cases eliminate future taxes on the reinvestment of the net proceeds from the revaluation itself. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. It's going to be critical for you to reposition assets and get assets out of the bank and at work in uh, a number of other markets for a variety of reasons. First, we know statistically that 95% of all windfalls, however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole through the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first and foremost by the confiscation of funds at the accounts at those banks. So you're going to want to get a substantial amount of your money out of the bank and at work in tangible assets and other markets. And lastly, the general shift from globally from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-based currencies in and of itself is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, and you're going to want to have an asset allocation that reflects uh, uh, a more diversified portfolio. Now, as I said, our trust package is going to be available. I've uh, explained to you uh, the pricing. We have an initial package that we're going to be happy to send you. I'm going to get to that in a moment. We're also going to go to the Q&A in just a moment. But before I do, and again for our newer callers, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and why you may want to seriously consider allowing us to assist you, or at the very least getting our initial no-obligation package. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've worked in these areas for over 38 years, and I, along with my clients, were personally involved in the reinstatement of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years' experience working precisely in this area, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Bob and I have been working together for a decade in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. And, of course, it's disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of their assets and their affairs. In point of fact, it's just the reverse. Under our system of civil procedure, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them. And invariably, it's at precisely those times in life that you need and want control. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes, then there are investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth in the aggregate, courtesy of the information age, is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains. 
confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So in point of fact, the only way that you can manage, protect, and control everything at all times and in all circumstances is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. And we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives, both pre- and post-RV as we understand them. Again, my thanks for taking the time to listen to the call. I'm going to go to the Q&A here in a second. First, let me reiterate for our newer callers, you may want to have a pen and paper ready. I'll give you our contact information. We're happy to send you our initial no-obligation package. It has a lot of information about us, about the revaluation, about trusts. It also includes everything you should need if you wish to proceed and establish a trust with us. You're free to review the package. Contact us by phone or email if you have any questions. We're happy to answer those questions, and there will be no consultation fee. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Q&A here. And when I do, uh, two quick rules. We do not take service calls on the Q&A. We reserve Q&A for questions about our trust product and trusts unlimited in general. And second, for obvious reasons, your name and number must be on the screen in order to participate in the Q&A. And uh, while I'm waiting for any potential questions, let me give you our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S, unlimited, LLC.com. Our email address is trusts with an S, unlimited, LLC at gmail.com. Our phone service is 307 274 4122. If you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback, or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services, you can either go to YouTube and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can go to IQD Calls and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last two digits, rather than dialing four zero you'll dial 39 and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you can go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. You should be on our email list within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out periodically, pre-RV, but post-RV, even post uh reinstitution of the dinar, emails may go out as often as daily. So let's go to our Q&A. Our first caller is area code 312. That's 312. Go ahead, and I bet that's less. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, Jim. Thanks yes, for sir. taking my call. Sure, sure. So based on what you said, I'm sure you're not telling us everything that you were told in conjunction with what I've heard from others, says that the things that have occurred over the weekend and up actually until through yesterday was all good, which actually confirms that some people that were paid last week or two weeks ago, yeah, they have record of some folks being paid already. Is there anything that you've heard about anyone that's been paid from those, uh, what is that, the safekeeping, the SKRs? Yes, yes. I have heard that, uh, and I've heard it from people that I don't believe have any reason to misrepresent. But I'm right. I'm not from Missouri, but I'm a show-me kind of guy. And until <laughs> I see an SKR or a deposit slip, I'm not going to believe it. Now, the other side of the coin is some people have got irate and said, that's not fair that these people got paid. I can understand that, but, you know, the world isn't fair, and we know that there are VIPs that just get special treatment, all right? We just know that that happens. But I've said this before. If it's true that people are being paid, then that means that at some point they're going to have to pay us or they're going to have to claw that money back because people will go to jail if people have been paid for an event that never occurs. So um, to me uh, – if it's if if it's uh, true, that's good news. 
So what's the time period for callback if it delays like uh, you said it could well, possibly do by 2020? I don't – well, what will happen is that that will just sit there. It will just sit there. No, no. The people that got paid, if their That's money were called back. I'm saying they're not, that, the that money's not – they're not going to – they're not going to spend that money. It's going to sit wherever it's sitting in some escrow account. Hmm. Being paid okay. doesn't mean it's being paid doesn't mean you walk out of the bank and go buy yourself uh, an Aston Martin. Being paid just means that the receipt is held pursuant to the official reinstitution and then revaluation of the currency. Well, the the pay that I'm talking about is the liquid pay. Well, this, I'm, I'm, this person, I, I don't see I don't person. see how that's legal. I'm not saying it didn't yeah. happen. I don't see how that's legal. Okay. I don't see how that's legal right. because that would require the conversion of the dinar into a functional currency which can be spent, and that cannot be done before the IMF takes them out of the program rate. So if that's happening, then people are, are flat, flouting the law. Okay, so either they're, either that's happening and they're doing whatever you just said to the law. Yeah, or... there's three possibilities. Nothing's happening or people have that money held in escrow, or people have actually been paid and they've walked out of the bank with a functional currency, which means they could be in deep trouble. Mm. All right. Cool in the game. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Have a great day. All right. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Our next caller here is area code 916-916. Go ahead. Good morning, Jim. It's uh, Christopher. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? <clears throat> well, um, one thing is you were going to give me a call back after last week's call. And I neglected to do that. I'm looking for a – I apologize for that. I'm looking right now for a piece of paper to write your – okay, hold on a sec. Let me write this number down so I don't even have to look it up. I'm st- – putting it on a stick, I'm going to sit right here on my desk, so I will call you as soon as we get off this call. I apologize for that. Okay. What can I do for you? Uh, I was listening to one of your competitors, and they were talking about uh, if you have any trust in the state of Nevada, that it has to become an open book to the public. And that seems counterproductive, and I was wondering if... Uh, uh, Mr. Blind you know, could respond to that. Yeah, he's not on the call right now. Um, okay. I will tell you this. Nevada is a good state for sub S Corp or an LLC. They are a good state for a trust. Nevada is one of the states that doesn't even really cooperate with the IRS. I'm not familiar with what you're saying, but that sounds rather implausible because a – an irrevocable trust is a contract, and under the Fourth Amendment, you're entitled to contract. And one of the uh, uh, governing rules of an of a irrevocable trust is the privacy. So, I don't. If that were true, then why would anyone ever set up a trust in Nevada? Because it defeats the purpose. So, I would have, off the top of my head, I would have to say that I don't believe that. But of course, I will investigate it after the call. Okay. And then you'll call me this afternoon, right? I'm going to call you within 15 minutes of getting off this call. Thank you, Jim. Okay. All right, Chris. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Well, Chris is our last caller for uh, this afternoon. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call. I hope it's been informative. I hope those of you that uh, have not even considered establishing a trust, we'll at least get our initial package. Once again, you're under no obligation by doing so. And we have another caller coming in, so let me go ahead and take this call. Area code 702, that's 702. Go ahead. Hey, Jim, this is Wayne. Thanks for taking my late yes, call. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, on, on gifting, um, you don't fill out the papers on this gift trust until after you made your mother load in there, right? What will happen is if you apply for our trust, there's a section in the application where you state if you want to establish a gift trust, and if so, you give us the desired name for that gift trust. The paralegals, when they create your package, will create that gift subtrust. So when we deliver that to you, you will have the gift subtrust, and within that is a document called the Minutes of the Meeting Gifting Letter. On that form, you will name the individuals you wish to, wish to gift and how much of each currency. 
You don't need to give, make the gift or even let the person know you are gifting them anything, but the documentation must exist prior to the revaluation. So you'll get all of that along with your trust. Yeah, I've got that. I was, I was looking at it, but you, you don't file any of this with a bank, right? No, you don't file any of that with anything. As a matter of fact, one of the other documents in there is the protocol for the exchange if you have a trust, and it specifically states when you go to do your exchange, you will take your master trust, the three bank docs, and your currencies. You do not take the gift trust. You do not even tell the bank the gift trust exists. Your objective is to do the, negotiate the exchange and get the USD placed in your gift trust bank account. You will walk out of that bank. You will go back at a later date, two days later, a week later, a month later, and then you will transfer funds from the, the uh, master trust bank account to the gift trust bank account you will then create. But you don't want to discuss that with the bank at the point of exchange because it will just confuse them. As long as the documentation exists pre-RV, you can set that all up whenever you want post-RV. Okay, so if you have, some, some uh, say, four or five people you're going to gift to and you got, say, several to know you're going to do it, you just put it in with yours and do the what exchange. You will do, what you will do is all of the exchange USD will go into your master trust bank account. Then when you go to fund the gift subtrust, if you have five people you're gifting, you will set up five separate accounts within that gift subtrust for each of them, and you will deposit in each of those five accounts uh, whatever money that you're gifting them, and you will personally manage that money and distribute it to them the way you want. And if you have five people, you may treat them very differently because one's old and one's young, one's disabled, one's irresponsible, whatever. Whatever your reason is, you'll distribute the money to these individuals the way you want. So I don't make <clears> – excuse me. It don't make any difference to the amount that you're going to put in there. No, absolutely not. That, the only thing you will do is on the gift letter where you're going to gift it through the trust, you will state, it will say, I'm going to give these five people up to a million dinar, which means you can give them a million, you can give them a half a million, you can give them 100000 you can give them nothing. You've got that flexibility. So when you decide exactly how much you want to give them, you'll deposit that amount from your trust bank account, to the new gift trust bank account you'll establish. But then you've got, to, you've got to make an account for each one of them, a bank account yes. for each one of them. Yes, yes, you will. And then you, you transfer the full amount over to them at that time? Well, let's, let, let's, say, let's say at the end of the day you're, you're gifting each one of them $100,000, all right? Mm -hmm. You'll set up five bank accounts, and you will transfer 100000 to each of those five bank accounts from your master trust bank account. Okay, is there any tax implication at that time, no. or the tax the no, tax, only, only tax to the money goes to them, right? Only to them. There'll be a tax implication to them, and we'll discuss how that once the reinstitute once the reinstitution of the dinar happens, and we know that we're going to have to be dealing with this. We will be having special conference calls prior to our seminar in Disney to discuss all of this, how it works, how you do it, what the tax implications are, et cetera. Okay, so let's say at a later time, later date you decide you want to put some more out of your mother load over to one or two of them, you can do that? You can do that as, as long as you amend the gift letter to reflect a new amount, you can do that. If you say, I'm going to give Jim up to a million dinar, and you decide you might want to give me two million, then you're going to have to amend that gifting letter to reflect a new amount. Yeah, but that time, at that time, you'll have already exchanged, and it'll just be a dollar amount, oh, right? It's too, oh, no, it's too late. Once the exchange has happened, it's too late. The only thing you'll be able to do after the exchange tax-free is you can gift individuals up to $15,000 a year gift tax-free, or if you're a married couple, up to 30000 a year. So theoretically, you could gift somebody a million dinar pre-RV, which might be worth a million or three million, and you, there's no gift tax because you gifted it to them when it was only worth a thousand dollars. And then, if you're a married individual, you can then give that person thirty thousand dollars a year gift tax free after the reval. But again, all of these things we'll discuss in detail once the reinstitution of the dinar occurs. Okay, one more question. 
what about it? What about if you just say, okay, I'm not going to use that trust. I'll just go ahead and hand them so many dinar and let them. Then you come it. to us and say, I don't need to give sub trust, so I want to convert it to a standard sub trust to hold a house or a car or something of that nature. Okay, but if you just before it revalues, give them so many dinar, then it's up to them to go in if and you've change. You've given. I've always said to people, no matter who you're gifting or how much. You write your gift letter, you set the currencies aside for them, but you tell them nothing because you want the ability to change your mind. Once you've given them the gift letter and the currency, it's done. Right. But you can do that and just let them... Uh, absolutely. You don't need to trust if you do that. You just have a standard gift letter and, and you give them the currency. And the only reason you utilize the gift subtrust is if you want to manage the money for them post-RV. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Well, I appreciate your time and your Thank answers. You. And uh, Yes, sir. Have a great day. You too, Wayne. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, Wayne is our last caller this afternoon. Again, thanks for listening to the call. If the things we said are of interest, contact us. We'll be glad to send you our initial package. Our next call is scheduled for next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Certainly, if something of a dramatic nature were to happen between now and then, we'll try to get an emergency email out and, if necessary, schedule an emergency conference call. But failing that, once again, we'll be back next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.